In this video, we create a persistence layer for our application. We create classes uh, which map our tables and fields from the database to the Java. And I navigate to my Java folder and create new package. I call it entity. My entity package will contain my entity classes. And my first entity class, class is um, product table. My product entity will be annotated with table and entity. Under the table, I put um, a name for the table name for a table is product table and I use data annotation from Lombok library to avoid writing uh, equals hash code getters and setters and to stream and first field I am gonna create is ID I'm gonna use generation state generation type identity to tell my G um, persistence GPE that I use Postgres uh, auto increment uh, field for ID. As I have ID field for all my tables, I just create some base entity class. and put my ID field under those base entity and then I just extend my base entity and I'm gonna mark my base entity as mapped superclass to show my persistence that this is base entity and all the classes uh, will be mapped with my base entity as you know if you navigate to the map super class you see um, a definition for this annotation and you can see the um, example of usage for this annotation and then I navigate back to my product entity and if you see guys IntelliJ IDEA shows me warning that she you know, it cannot res be resolved product table I just assign data data source as my local host and that's it if you have a community version of IntelliJ IDEA or other IDEA, this warning will not bother you. And then I need my title field. As far as you remember, I'm planning to store my images as base64, so it's just string format. Price I'm gonna store in big decimal. Big decimal is object for Java to store money. and uh, that's it with the product entity table next we create 
let's say we create user table and again we extend base entity and then we mark our a class as table and entity and don't forget to paste name for the table and then I just add user fields uh, as well as I did for product entity I just copy paste to speed up my work And I don't want my password to be shown in to string method. So I just add data annotation and then I just add to string annotation and exclude my password field from the to string method because password is sensitive information so I don't want someone to see password in logs for example and next table is order table I just copy paste annotations from user in I in my order table I have a comment and I have a user And it's many to one. Just write join column, and join column is user ID. And next dependency is purchase item but I didn't create it let's create purchase item And my purchase item has count and my purchase item has product ID. And again, it's many to one. And then, uh, after I created purchase item entity, I 
return to my order entity and create or just item entity and in my order entity join join column is purchase item id and it's all with entity classes and now we are ready to navigate to our repository classes which we gonna create for our uh, entity firstly I create repository package and then I create uh, interfaces uh, which extends GPA repository And first param is our entity and next is uh, type of primary key. Uh, my primary key stores in my base entity. It's, uh, it has an uh, integer type. So I pay, um, paste an uh, integer type for my primary key in user entity repository. And for now, my user entity repository has basic root operations for user entity. If you navigate to GPA repository, you find uh, a list of methods which are uh, free, uh, which you are free to use without any implementations. And you can see that it's basic root operations and basic uh, find all operations, uh, find by ID, find all etc and if i want to create my custom methods i just need to create um, uh, uh, these methods in the repository and then implement a spring boot data gpa uh, will take care about uh, the implementation for my methods and for now we are gonna leave these uh, repositories empty and let's create another repositories for um, all other entity classes And that's it. To make sure our repositories work fine, I'm gonna test only one, for example, user entity. Uh, and for testing purpose, I navigate to my uh, main Spring Boot application and create method which uh, will start working after my application starts. 
and we have annotation event listener application ready event then I create method and then I just inject my user for example uh, user repository and then I just try to save user to my database to make sure I did everything correct And let's call user entity repository save. As you can see, guys, I have my save method in my user entity repository, even though I haven't created it. It's because Spring Data GPA provides all the crude methods for you. And I'm gonna pass my user entity and try to save. I just restart my application and I see some errors. Let's check. Email should not be null. Let's set, set our user email and try once again. Yeah, our application started successfully. We can navigate to our database and try to check if our user was created and yeah it created successfully you can see that it has address phone email and other fields it has id uh, too because first attention was failed because we haven't assigned email and that's it for today stay tuned and next time we create some logic for our products and for our cart.